What's up, everyone? Today on the show, very exciting, something interesting today. We are taking another hop in the old YouTube time machine today to head back to 2008 to look at a hand history that I played in a $750,000 guaranteed tournament on Full Tilt Poker back in the day. I uh, haven't pre-reviewed any of these hands, although I do remember uh, how this whole thing ends up. But besides that, I haven't pre-reviewed anything today. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you guys one more time that we're only about two weeks away from our big event in Reno. If you want to go find out more about what's happening in Reno, and I'm really excited for it. we got so many cool things happening. Tournaments, cash games, seminars, hangouts, a survivor viewing party, uh, board game nights, all sorts of things. Free rolls! I'm trying to put you guys into the main event. I'm trying my best. And there are all sorts of ways you can win uh, room stays. To, uh, I'm trying to make it as cheap as possible. I'm trying to make it as cheap as possible for you guys to come hang out with me. So, uh, if that sounds cool to you guys, you can go check that out. Runup.com slash Reno. And uh, that's it. And now, for another pull at the old time warp let's take a look all right so uh let's talk a little bit about who we have at this table here first because we actually do know some of our opponents here for a change so uh we actually have a couple of players here that we're familiar with the one that is the most familiar with us is sir watts who is a well-known tournament player he plays a lot of uh everything i guess he plays very well i have never seen him do anything that i have ever thought is bad i've known him for years he plays very very well uh don't know uh i think this johnny g stacks guy might have been familiar to me at the time but i don't remember him uh now same thing with this guy and uh maybe this guy i knew as well nobody else seems to ring a bell to me but by far the best player at the table i think is sir watts let's look at the chip stacks the chip leader is currently sitting out having just moved from the last table so he's over there uh we're in second in chips with 1.7 million uh, and then uh, everybody else has basically got like a million except for Mark and Anna who both have like 500k. Uh, blind Strand at 50 so it, it is a pretty shallow final table here. As far as for like historical purposes reference for you guys, uh, this was uh, pretty deep into my tournament career at this point. The two uh, other time warps that we've done before were both 2007. So now this is actually like about a year after the first one of those and maybe like uh, nine months after the second one of those. So you can go check those out also. It's a million guarantee and a 500k guarantee. So today is right in between guarantee. So uh, let's take a look and uh, go from there. So my plan is to go over pretty much every hand because, you know, at this point, uh, I think there's going to be things we can always talk about, analyze, and say, was this good, was this bad, did they make mistakes, or what. You know, making making a final table like this doesn't happen too often, even though it did happen for me like three times within a year. Usually it doesn't happen too often. So you, when you make it to these final tables, it's really important that you maximize your opportunities. So we're going to take a look at uh, every hand through the rest of this final table and see uh, see what we think about how I played, how everybody else played, and go from there. Ace and offshoot here under the gun. Uh, I feel like this decision would be uh, entirely based on how I felt in the moment, given the table dynamics. So if we thought that everybody at this table was pretty tight, pretty snug, wasn't going to be too aggressive preflop, let's attack. If we weren't sure, let's attack. If we thought that we knew that, like, okay, these guys are really aggressive, these players don't care, they're going to get it in super widely against us. Like, if we thought that we were going to run into some into some uh, pressure, then we might want to just say, okay, I'll just fold for now. If we had, like, 1.1 million, 900k, 1.3 million we definitely fold but i think we have enough chips here we could try to make it a, we could try to take a, a stab here risking like you know 120 to win 129 doesn't have to work that often for us to make a profit uh so i, I my gut instinct tells me to attack here let's see what old jay carver wants to do okay well a little nittery but it doesn't necessarily mean anything you know i wasn't i wasn't really a nit back then but i'm sure i was a nit in different ways than i would be these days so uh we'll we'll have to see about that Pretty big open here from this guy under the gun plus one to 230k. Uh, I am not sure what we should do in this spot because this is really weird because these two players are both pretty short. I mean, all, these four players are all under 20 big blinds, and uh, this guy doesn't have that much more than that. So when he makes it the 230k, four and a half times raise, if we had ace queen in this spot, I think you could arguably just fold. I mean, it would be really crazy and I would be disgusted, but I think you would just fold if you had ace queen in the spot. Uh, if you had two nines, I think it's the same thing. I think you're like, okay, I guess I just fold here. So 
Unless we knew anything about this opponent, I would be inclined to fold those weaker hands. Ace King, though, I think is just too good. You know, there's 358k in the pot. Uh, I feel like our response here is just, I'm all in. We just want to put max pressure on right now. We're happy to take down this 350k. We make no mistakes, right? We make no mistakes at all. He might make mistakes by folding a pair. That would be a mistake. If you could see our cards, he would call. So uh, I think making a, making it all in is probably the correct play. We could make it 650k or something like that. And then if he wants to call, we run it. If we want to get it in, we go ahead and do that. That's okay as well. But without knowing specifically anything about the dynamics of things, I'm okay with just shoving, you know? We... We don't want him to stick around. We want to put. We want to put. You know. Uh, we we don't. We don't really want him to get in with a flip with us or anything like that. Uh, I wouldn't hate making a, like a small raise, but I think making it. Uh, I think making it like 480k is just asking for trouble. He's gonna just call, and then there are no pairs flop, and then we're in the situation where there's a million in the pot, a million in our stack. We're probably all in on every flop, and then you know we just don't want to play that game. We want to play the survival game, P climb the payouts. Uh, I actually did go back and chop out the payouts, uh, so. Let's see here. So the payouts of this tournament are 9th is 10K. Let's see. 9th is 10K. 8th is 13K. 7th uh, is 17K. And then 23, 31, 41, 52, 80 And first place takes home uh, 130K. So uh, pretty flat payouts until we get to like the, f the top three that are 50, 80, and 130. Below that, it's all pretty flat. Not really big jumps. So uh, I guess that does encourage us to take slight gambles. The more steeper it is, uh, I don't know. I guess I guess it, it seems kind of close. This structure seems like it's very close. Anyway, I think we're all in here, but uh, I think that's fine. If we folded, that would be the craziest thing. Calling also would be okay, but I, I don't really like that. Okay, so we decided to go with the raise in between option, which again, I guess is fine. You know, this making it as big as I made it, there's no chance that we could do anything but get it in on any result. If he calls, we're all in on every flop because there's going to be 1.5 in there. We have 900 behind. If he folds, great, we win. If he goes all in, great, we call. So let's see what happens here. Oh. <laughs> Did not think that was what was going to happen. Although, not that I'm shocked because... Not that I'm shocked because he uh, he made it two, four and a half big blinds under the gun. So, plus one. So, he's probably got something. That's not a shock to me. Uh, what would be a shock to me is if I check folded. If I check folded here, I would be uh, pretty flummoxed with, uh, with my decisions here. I mean, <laughs> I think this is an automatic all-in, but maybe I do something terrible and check because that would be really bad because I'm not check calling all-in. There's no way I'm doing that as my play here. So if I check, I'm check folding, and I'm just making so many mistakes against him when he has not a pair in his hand. And sometimes he'll fold hands that have pairs, like if he has sevens or sixes, like eights. Those hands might just fold right now, but not if we check. Those hands do not fold. So I'd love to see myself move all-in. Let's see what I do here. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was a little worried. I was a little worried. I was like, oh, please don't check fold. Come on, that would be so bad. That would just be terrible if I just make it 700k and then just check fold. Uh, so if we were deeper here against Watts, I wouldn't mind calling, but we're not even anywhere near close enough to call uh, given how shallow he is and how shallow everybody else is behind us. Uh, so I think I like that fold there. Seems like the uh, play has been pretty raise and take it at this point. Uh, I was going to say that this is not a bad spot to attack here, given that we haven't seen these players be too aggressive yet pre-flop. Um, I think we could have just min-raised, though. I'm not really sure I'm making it 120 does accomplish for us. Like, it's okay, but again, like, why? Why? We're just risking an extra half a big blind we don't have to. Uh, unless we have a reason, like people are attacking min raises or correctly defending against min raises, or we think they're more likely to not correctly defend against higher raises, I still don't uh, really love that. I think we can make it a little bit smaller and just be a little bit more efficient. Okay, this button shoves, open shoves against the two short stacks. So the two short stacks are kind of a bit of a folding race. I actually wouldn't hate opening this spot as well because we have these two players will both play very tightly against us because Anorexic is trying to outlast Mark and Mark is trying to outlast Anna. So both of them are going to have to play very tight. And then these players aren't going to want to go broke either because these two players are so short. Now we know Watts is really good, but Watts we know is also aware of all those mathematical implications of these players having the stacks they have. So I don't think Watts would be too likely to get involved here either. So I actually think this is not a bad spot to consider attacking as well. Looks like uh, Buko Venidis is probably going to have to call against this shove. He's getting 2.2 uh, to 1. So basically anything he opens, I think he has to call at this point. Unless it's a complete garbage steal. Ace-King versus Ace-Queen. Ooh, ouch. Uh, queen ball on the river. Glad we didn't open with the Jack-4. That would have been terrible. <laughs> Old Jay Carver was just in tune, I guess, you know? Okay, over we go to Watts, who makes it 135 on the button. 
I think if you showed this hand history to Watts, he would probably also tell you he should have min raised. I think uh, probably very similar reasons to me. You know, this is six years ago now, over six years ago now, believe it or not. Uh, so I don't know what Watts' plans are. I would think whatever he opened with, he would know already whether he's going to call or not when this guy shoves. Let's see what he's, his plan is. He just folds. So I, I would bet you if you showed this to Watts, he would tell you you should have probably been raised. That's, that's just my, my guess here. Um, so decision time. We are the chip lead now, which is awesome, thanks to that ace-king hand. Uh, and we have to call 1.4. We're getting 1.46 to 1 here. We have to call 380k to win 550. I think we fold this here. You know, it's okay for us to have this, like, dynamic of having the short stack and these guys kind of competing in a folding race. Like, these guys are kind of handcuffed. These guys are kind of handcuffed. Like, it's a very precarious situation stack-wise. And as the chip leader, I kind of want to preserve that. I don't want to gamble it up with a bad ace that he's very often dominating us or having us in bad shape and we lose and give away a quarter of our stack or 20% of our stack or whatever it is. So I would like to see myself fold here, but let's see. Uh, let's see what old Jake Carver wants to do. We are in sync. <laughs> nice to know. Probably just going to be folding that there, although I wouldn't mind attacking in a re-raise. That's not a thing that I do too often, but I don't think it's a bad time just to consider it. Uh, this just seems like a straight-up fold. A lot of raise and takes it, so uh, raise and take it. So uh, raise this for sure. There's no way that old Jake Carver folds his hand. No way. I would not have thought. I would have said there's no way I fold and there's no way I call. I was right about the no way I folding thing at least. Uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is like this is like five years ahead of my time. The open limping, the <laughs> open limping in late position to guarantee we can see a flop with the old eight ten ball. Uh, I I kind of like this actually. It's like uh, it's very like new age, but uh, I think this is really cool. So let's see how this works out for us. Let's see let's see if this was actually developed thought or like more button clicking. Cause the whole point of calling is so I can call when they raise like this. So we get to be in position getting a great price. 2.3 to 1 plus position uh, with like two times pot behind. So uh, if I fold, I'm gonna be a much a much bigger downer on this play than if we call. If we call, I love it. It was perfect. I'm very happy that we limped and got to see a flop. And if we had raised, we probably would have got shoved on and not seen a flop. So let's see if I continue with the correct play here and call. Nice. Ah, oh, yes, and then rewarded by Jacob instantly. There we go. The king and the eight and the eight. Boom. Oh, that's how you win poker tournaments, boys. Uh, so I actually kind of bet you that old Jay Carver was like, I'm all in because that's how I used to play. Uh, my guess is that I just shoved, which is really bad because I should just call. There's really no reason to shove, but there's so much in the pot. I was probably just like, okay, I'm all in. But it's really bad to shove, I think, because we want to just call. And his most likely play on any single turn card is all in. And we are never, ever folding, right? Turn card is the ace of hearts. We are not folding. It doesn't matter what the worst card, king on the turn, not folding. So it doesn't matter what the turn card is. We're basically just automatically all in. But by calling on flop, we allow him to either make a pair, try to bluff, turn another heart. You know, we allow him to make all those mistakes, and we're okay with that because we have the chips to spare. So even in a calamity situation here, uh, I think we'd still end up being okay. So let's see if I call or shove, but I have a feeling that we shove. And I actually think if we were going to raise, min raising is probably better than shoving anyway. Um, but let's see what happens here. Call, 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 call. Yes! Oh, I love this hand history already! This is an amazing hand. This is my favorite hand of mine that I've ever seen of myself. I don't even remember the last time, because I have no memory. I have not pre-reviewed any of these hands, so uh, this is awesome. I hope he just shoves. Oh, please do it. Oh, I wanted to relive that moment. I just wanted it so bad. I have no idea. I thought he shoved. Uh, so... In this spot, when he checks to us here, we have a couple different options, right? We can check back and kind of be like, okay, we have two sevens, we have ace queen, we've got two nines, we have a queen jack of hearts. Like, I'd just check back and then give him a chance to either improve or bluff on the river himself. Or we could make a small bet, I think. I think we can make a bet like 200k, 180k, uh, 230k. No more than like a quarter of the pot. There's no reason to. No reason to. He's either all in or he isn't. If we want to try to like represent some sort of bluffs or light hands or put pressure on him in some way, we bet 180k here and that is more than enough to get the job done, I think. So uh, I think I actually kind of like checking the best here, but uh, let's see what old Jake Carver wants to do. Just don't shove. Shoving is the worst. Oh my god, oh, this is great. This, maybe, I, maybe I'm more in sync with my old self than I thought. Let's see what happens here. Come on, Billy the Kid. Come on, just uh, I'm all in. I've got Ace King. I'm all in.
If he has Ace King, I guess we're gonna get it all anyway. So let's just hope he just bluffs us with Ace Queen. Damn it. That is the problem with these final tables. People don't tend to bluff all in too often. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, the, what I want to do here is bet like 400k. I don't think he's very strong. If he had aces, ace king, uh, or like, you know, even like king queen would probably just have shoved at some point before now. So I think he has a hand that's like queens, you know, jacks, tens, nines. He could have a hand like ace queen, could have a hand like ace jack. Those hands aren't calling no matter what we bet, right? Uh, or probably not, at least. We have to bet like 200k to get like ace queen to call, I think. So. Uh, I feel like I like betting around, again, like 240, 280, maybe like 320 at highest. You know, I, I think anything higher than like half his stack is too much. Something around like 390 is the absolute highest I think we should go in this spot. Let's see what old J. Carver wants to do. Uh, okay, it's 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 okay. Too much, though, because he will realize that if he calls this, he'll have, like, 300k left over. So it's really hard for him to call unless he happens to have, like, a king or, a, like, a good king that played oddly. Or any king, I guess, that played oddly. Um, or, like, again, aces or, you know, queens is like, okay, but, you know, maybe not. Like, I think this just makes it too hard to call. Just take off one of those 100k chips, and I'm a happy camper. Billy is not a happy camper, but he would have been less of a happy camper had he called. Ace Queen, very next hand. So, having just won the last hand, and uh, I love how he played that hand. By the way, that hand was beautiful. Uh, I I think we should raise his hand for sure, right? We're exerting our dominance. We're flexing our wings a little bit here. You know, we're just like uh, I think we want to raise this for sure. Set the tone, right? You know, kind of say we're going to be the dominant chip leader. If you're going to put if you're going to put a chip in the pot, you're going to have to go through us. We're going to we're going to fight you on every pot. So making it like 280k here, 270k here, 290k here is awesome. Awesome, I think he'll he'll either fold he, if he folds great if he calls great if he raises we have a decision to make but you know I'm not worried about that we'll probably out decide him in the long run so uh, let's see what old Carver wants to do I have a feeling and I've been wrong so far I have a feeling that I called because I was a bigger fan of calling back then with the plan of calling a shove if, if it went heads up if like this guy or this guy or really anybody shoves behind us except for Buko but anybody else shoves I would probably have just called assuming it was heads up uh, but let's see what old Carver wants to do See, I, I don't mind this, but I think, uh, I just don't think we're like maximizing. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it's very close. I, I understand the reasons why I like calling, to, why I liked calling here, especially back in the day, but I think it's just not better than just putting pressure on this spot. Like, it'll just create, it'll just create, even though calling and raising, if you were going to say, is calling or raising with ace queen here uh, better? And you talk, talked specifically and narrowly about the this exact hand. I think it's very close between calling and raising. It's a very interesting conversation about like nuance and details and whatever. But I think the reason why raising is better is because not of the narrow side, but because of the more broad environmental benefits that it has for us. We re-raise. We kind of establish that we're the dominant chip leader. We shut down some of these players from opening. People play tighter to us. They think about, wow, if we get a pot with Jay Carver, we know he's going to put pressure on us. There was a, a thing said to me years and years ago by uh, Sean Deeb who said, whenever if he ever thought that he was going to have to make like a marginal-ish call, like let's say he knew he was he re-raised somebody with 10-3 suited and somebody else was going to shove and he knew he'd have to call mathematically, that he would always insta-call because it always made people like, wow, he called me with 10-3 so fast. Like, if they didn't, if they weren't familiar with the math and how the math did make it probably close to automatic, it would make people very afraid of dealing with Sean because they were always afraid that he was going to just snap call them and didn't care. So this is kind of similar to that where we want to kind of establish that we're the guy with the whip. We're the guy that's just, you know, you know cracking down on the table. And I think that that is why making a, a raise is better because of the longer-term implications. Uh, in this hand, we did just call, though. My plan is on a Jack-5 deuce board. I can't imagine my plan is to fold unless he bets literally the pot. 225 is a lot, but I can't imagine uh, folding yet. We are getting 3 to 1, basically 2.6 to 1 in position with a hand that could very easily be the best hand right now. We could always turn aces and queens and kings and tens and threes and fours. So there are plenty of cards that can come that will give us more equity on the turn anyway. And we could just have the best hand right here and now. Let's see if old Jay Carver agrees with me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. God. Poker in 2008 was so much fun. It was so good. 360K. Hmm. So once again, we have a decision tree to make here, right? We can either say, okay, I'll just call. I've got two sevens. I've got ace four of hearts, maybe. I've got uh, the, the jack and the nine or something like that. Or we could raise. 
and uh, maybe we could just put some pressure on him. Basically, all you have to do is click the raise button because it's effectively putting him all in anyway, right? There's already 1.2 million in the pot. If we just click the raise button right now, and he has anything like, you know, ace jack, king jack, king queen, queen 10, uh, you know, even if he has a hand like, you know, I can't imagine he has a hand like King-10 of hearts or like Ace-10 of hearts or 10-9 of hearts because this would be a really bad bet size because you'd be in a really weird spot if we raised. Um, but I, I, I think I think I actually like calling better because there are just basically zero rivers that bother us. Literally nothing but a king is even bothersome at all, really. Jacks are annoying, but if a jack comes on the river, it's hard to have three of a kind. And uh, it basically doesn't matter anyway because we weren't going to fold on the turn. So if it comes a jack and he shoves and he has a jack, he was going to get all the money anyway on the turn. So I'm not really worried about that. But if we just call, we give him another chance to maybe bluff on the river, maybe improve to a uh, second best hand. You know, or, you know, just make some more mistakes on the end. Because if we shove here, I don't think he's necessarily going to call all in with, like, Jack-10, you know. But maybe he'll check call on the river for a similar size bet. So I think I'd like to see us call, but I don't think that play was in my arsenal back in 2008. I've been surprised so far this video, though. All right. Finally, I, finally, I, I remember my old, my old wild self correctly. And uh, I don't love this, but it's, it's certainly okay. It can't be bad, obviously. All right, the machine rolls on here. 3.8 million is a, I think it's a, uh, a fuck ton of chips. There is nobody else that has over 2 million, so that is great. So this is actually kind of similar to the Apprentice episode that we were looking at where we had the hero there who was the chip leader, and now we are the chip leader, so we can talk a little bit more about how we can how we can kind of uh, impose our will, how we can uh, dominate the table, and looking for those spots we can kind of pick up value and stuff like that. Uh, in this hand, this player had half a blind left and shoved, tens shoved, ace king called all in on the big blind or called those all ins, and uh, he we're gonna need some tens otherwise we're gonna lose two players here. Okay, so. Six players left. We're guaranteed now $23,000. $200 buy-in tournament, by the way, if I didn't say so earlier. Uh, Going to have to just fold. Okay. Raising the shove. Watts must have. Wow. Wow, that's interesting. I don't, I don't think that is... Uh, I don't think Watts would say that's correct. I mean, unless this player is really, really wide, I think he would look at that, look at this and think this is a little too wide. Obviously, he ran into a terrible case scenario here, but to basically call all in with A6, I don't, I don't think that is, is very good. And I, I don't think he would think so either. I mean, uh, I, I think I think Watts has always been very uh, objective as a poker thinker. So I, I think he would look back on this and, and think he just folded. You know, whenever you call all in, you really need to be pretty confident that you have the the best hand or the mathematical edge to, to do so because you have no fold equity. You're just calling all in basically and that's what happened here. So uh, I think this is obviously a terrible case scenario for Watts. Great scenario for us though to have the second best player uh, at risk with such a behind hand. Aces full is going to take this one down. This is actually kind of a cool spot to raise because Watts is so short and these guys are kind of short. We know this guy's going to raising a lot. He is in second place. And we kind of want to just be like, what are you doing, buddy? This is our final table. What are you doing over there? Nice. Uh, old Jay Carver don't take no shit from no one. That's right. The race size is a little on the big side, but, you know, it seems okay. Let's see how this works out for us. Oh, we get to see a flop. Okay. Huge pot here, by the way. 900k in the pot. Basically uh, the same size as Anna's stack. Okay. <laughs> no big deal. Excellent flop for us as the pre-flop re-raiser. You know, we're going to have hands like aces, kings, queens, and jacks, and tens far more often than our opponent is as the re-raiser. I think these days I would bet like 375, like 420, three and a quarter. I bet you old Jay Carver bet like 600 here because I didn't really understand like the difference between 600 and 350 in this spot. So uh, I think uh, I should bet lower, but let's see what old Jay Carver wants to do here. Yep, 600. <laughs> I mean, it's okay, but it's just like not perfect, I don't think. I just think it's a little too big. Because the hands he folds for the hands he folds for 400 and the hands he folds for 600 are basically no different, right? If he has two eights, he's not folding for, for 600 or 400 or whatever. He's not folding, probably, right? Either way. So uh, probably either way. Not for sure. It is 2008, but probably not folding either way. If he has two sixes, not folding either way. If he has ace-queen, not folding probably either way. 
say, you know, you don't want to make it too small so he peels too correctly. You don't want him to call with like fours or like, you know, him calling with ace eight here is an absolute disaster. But that being said, he doesn't call with ace eight for 400 or 380. He folds eight, ace eight. So, I mean, probably. So, uh, I think this is a little on the big side, but I don't hate it. And we are still are risking 600 to win 900, so it can't be terrible. Boom. Oh my god. I have I don't think I've ever pre-reviewed this hand history. When I discovered it in the in my in my collection, I was like, what is this hand history? I had no idea that this even happened. And I'm very excited to find it though. It's like a lost treasure. Uh, King Queen here, I'm certainly not going to be folding. Both these players have under 20 big blinds. He has 25 big blinds, so we could just shove right here if we wanted, but I wouldn't hate calling also. That would also be okay, but we could just make it 400, 300. It really doesn't matter. As long as I don't click the fold button, I don't really think it makes a difference what we do here. Okay, decide to, like, min raise. Wow. See, this is, uh, this, this is mistake opening potential here, right? So the reason why I think this is like, I mean, it's okay, because we're, we're, it's okay, right? Because if you ignore Watts existing, making it 160 to win the blinds nannies is okay, and then he re-raises, and then we can make a decision. But I think when he shoves for 100, and there's already, you know, what is there in the pot? One uh, through, like, 250 in the pot already? Like, I... I, I I, I have a feeling that we're going to make mistakes here sometimes. Sometimes he'll have, like, King Queen himself. He'll have Ace Jack. He'll have Pocket Jacks, Pocket Tens, Pocket Nines, you know, Pocket Eights even. He could just think that we're just trying to steal, and he's trying to isolate and get some dead money in there. So he could be very aggressive here. I've seen people show up with, like, Jack Nine suited in this spot. And if we ever fold King Queen and he has Jack Nine suited, we are getting owned. And I don't like getting owned. So, uh... I, in 2014, would look at this guy, roll my eyes for my terrible, not terrible, but my not great decision uh, to open to this size, and then I would call. Because we're getting almost 3-1 to one again, even out of position. So basically, I would say, okay, let's run the cards dealer, let's try to flop something, and if we flop something good, we check. Flop something medium, maybe we just go all in, maybe he'll fold like ace-king, let's say it comes like, let's say it comes like uh, jack-10-4. I think we just open shove, maybe he folds hands like ace-king, ace-queen probably wouldn't, but maybe, you know, uh, so stuff like that. Let's see what happens in this hand. Jack-9-x, by the way, probably another one we just open shove. Don't love it. Don't love it. See this? This is exactly what I mean. We're making a terrible mistake mathematically speaking. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that mathematical price we're getting here. Look at look at look at this amazing price we're getting and look at the truth of it, right? Cuz we ignore Watts. This is basically like an ante. Watts is basically an ante in this pot. So, Watts and the blinds and the antes, all of that plus our dead money, uh, you know, we're, we have to call 320 to win all of that and we're flipping. And instead of flipping, we fold. That is an absolute disaster that that guy inflicted upon us. That all began by this decision to make it 160 and not either just call or reshove ourselves. It's true. Let's see what happens here. Yep. I mean, truly, truly the definition of disastrous here, right? Instead of busting him, busting Watts, and winning the tournament, uh, Watts still goes broke, but uh, which is okay, I guess. But this guy now wins 500k, so he has two million. And so instead of him having two million, we would have six million, and the other three would have four million combined. So uh, this is not a scenario that worked out great for us. But uh, you know, I, I I don't think. I don't think it's a mistake. I think it's a mistake that plenty of people make, so it's not like a decision that uh, is like easy by any means, I think, but I still think we didn't get it right, um, which is interesting. Interesting hand, though, for sure. I think that's a definitely uh, a hand to you can draw, like, learning mosquito. You can learn some things from there. In 2014, there is no way I would fold this hand. Again, look at the, look at the price. 2.5 to 1 will win this hand 28% of the time post flop against some guy that has two underscores in his name. You know, get out of here. There's no way. We'll 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 be able to win this for sure enough in the long run. I would call like queen four here and be like, all right, whatever, run it. Antes, etc. Queen four might be close, but queen nine's not. So that's that's a mistake in my opinion as well. We'll play here for a few more hands, and uh, we will definitely wrap this video up uh, in part two tomorrow. If you enjoyed today's video, please let me know about it in the comments below and on Twitter. Uh, that would be awesome. I'd really appreciate that. Certainly, we're going to be min-raising this here. Uh, not min-raising, but that's close enough back in 2008. Uh, so, again, in... In 2014, there is no way I would fold. But back in 2008, my thought process wasn't really like a mathematical logic machine. It was a lot closer to the, what do you have over there? 
you have it. Like, it's a, it has some flaws to it because it's not a perfectly oiled robot. It's just like a, like a nice bowl of spaghetti. Like, you know, it's nice, but it's not perfectly optimized and efficient, right? So I think, uh, I think we could either shove very arguably could just go all in because this guy could be light. He could just be re-raising. We're the chip leader. We're going to be raising so many buttons. We've seen him be aggressive before. I guess he had jacks and, you know, decent hands, but uh, we could just shove. We have king queen. He'll shove. He'll fold enough times for us to break even when he calls. Whatever. We'll run the cards. I have king queen. We lose. We still have 3 million, 2.8 million or whatever. We'll still be uh, in first if we lose. So whatever. We could call also, which is totally fine as well. Uh, getting, again, 2.6 to 1 in position. I'm fine with calling. Run the cards dealer. But but back in those days, I didn't quite think that calling was as much of an option as I know it is now. So uh, I don't know. Let's see what I do back in the day. Okay. I like. I, I don't hate it. I think shoving might be a little bit better, but I, I guess calling is fine as well. Yeesh. Hmm. Let's see what happens here. Not the greatest flops for us. 333. So if we call, there's 1.5 in the middle, and he has 900k behind. That sucks. That sucks. I think we have to call. I think we have to call and see what happens on the turn. If he has two tens and the turn is like a six, he's not all in. He's not all in. Because if we just have ace-jack, ace-ten, ace-queen, we just call. We just call. We could have those hands. We play those hands exactly the same way. So I think that calling on flop, hoping he shuts down with hands that we are losing to and only continues with hands that we are behind of, which is not necessarily a guarantee, but I think that's the most reasonable plan. We are getting 3.7 to 1, you know, so we are getting a very good price to continue here. And if he's ever light, like he ever has 10, 9 of hearts and just is like, well, I'm one and done and we fold. Oh my God, it's just a catastrophe. Catastrophe. If he has 10, 9 of hearts, he's drawing dead and we just fold. This is terrible. Getting 4 to 1. So uh, let's. I'd like to see us call here, but let's see what uh, Old G Carver wants to do. Again, I feel like this is not a spot that I was comfortable in in, the, in those days. I was like, uh, I don't know. He probably just has it in our fold. There's not a logic thought process behind that there. So uh, I think we can we can call this profitably. But let's see what Old G Carver thinks about this. Nice, nice job, Old Me. I get right back in that time warp and fist bump. Wow, interesting turn card. Interesting turn card. I think that means we can't fold if he shoves. <laughs> oh, this is a sick hand history. This is a, I love I love YouTube. If I told you guys I love YouTube, I'm so glad we can share this experience together because this hand history has been so much fun to go over for so far. Probably one of my most uh, my favorite run up episodes so far this season. At least for me, this has been awesome. So uh, especially because I have no memory of any of it. So <laughs> it's great. Uh, so we have to call 2.7. We're getting 2.7 to one here to call. I would love to see how long he took before he shoved. I would love to have all the information we could have on this guy. Like, to make this decision on the turn is one of those, like, deep reservoir summoning up all of your energy and uh, memory and uh, poker and knowledge and putting it all into the big cauldron of stress and anxiety in the moment of the final table with all the money on the line and then pulling out the hopefully correct answer. This is this is why I play tournament poker. For sure. It is. It's great situations like this. So what we do here is it's really hard from this chair in 2014 to say what is the correct answer. So we'll talk about what uh, what we could evaluate that would help me get to what I think would be the closest to correct answer. So the first thing is, have we seen him three bet us often in the past? So how what what are the starting hands that he can have that will re-raise here? Uh, what does he think we have in this spot? What does he think we are opening in this spot preflop? Does he think we're opening widely or not? We're playing five-handed, we're the chip leader, we've been on a roll. All these things make me think that he probably expects us to be kind of on the light side. Would he play a hand like ace-deuce this way? Probably not, right? He probably has to have like ace-10 suited, ace-jack suited, ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king, ace-ace. He could have ace-ace, but he probably should check if he has ace-ace. Uh, you know, he could have king-king, uh, and that's basically it, right? For hands we lose to. What do we beat? We beat hands like queen-jack of diamonds, queen-ten of diamonds, uh... Don't beat ace X of diamonds. We beat no aces if he ever has lower aces, which I don't think he does, but he might. Um, 
we beat like King Jack, but I feel like King Jack might check. If he tanks forever and shoves, I'm probably a little more likely to call, but again, I'm not really sure. It's impossible. This is a tough situation, man. This is a tough call. I'd love to hear what you guys would do in this hand. Let me know in the comments below, but let's see what old Jake Carver did. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Oh, brutal. Brutal, br brutal that he had a low ace. I mean, him having a him having a low ace and re-raising his preflop. This is why we should just shove pre. Remember back in the old days when I said we should just shove preflop. Well, this is why, because he just folds his hand pre and he put in a quarter of his stack and then just has to fold when we shove with our hand and make and we make. Not only are we making no mistakes, but he makes a mistake with ace deuce there. I don't mind having called preflop playing the rest of the hand this way. Um, I don't I don't really mind it, and I'm sure he did tank a lot on the turn. And I'm I if I read him to be weak-ish on the turn, it's because he probably wasn't sure what to do. He probably was like, I mean, man, if we have ace-5 suited, ace-jack, ace-10 ourselves, like, he could arguably have just checked this turn, I think, with his exact hand. But um, I don't mind how he played it at all. He played it fine. I think we made a mistake. Preflop, maybe a small one, and then the rest of the hand I think is fine. So we're going to kick off this hand history from here tomorrow. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, don't forget, if you uh, if you guys enjoyed our little time warp back in uh, the 2008 over here, let me know in the comments below. Also on Twitter, twitter.com slash Jason Somerville. Remember, we're doing PokerStars home games now. You can play with me now every single day on PokerStars home games. You can find out all that info, uh, runitup.com slash Reno. And I am looking forward to seeing and meeting some of you for the first time in Reno in only two weeks now. So uh, you can find out all information over there at runup.com slash reno as well thanks for watching guys i will see you for the conclusion of this video tomorrow peace we are going to be continuing from yesterday's youtube time warp episode yes that's right we're reviewing a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar guarantee final table that i made back in 2008 nice job old jay carver that's right sharp instincts just like a hyena you should all try to be more like the hyena it's true this is why you just call preflop by the way a little needle from, from the future. Idiot.